Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Sharon Richter, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here for our virtual service on this Christ the King Sunday. Today, I am saddened to inform you of the death of Pastor Floyd Lawson, who served Trinity faithfully for many years and served the ELCA for many years. We will send out information about remembrances when we do receive those from the Synod. Welcome again to Trinity Lutheran Church. Please join me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Holy One, we confess, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are, we are not, not faithful, faithful in using, using your, your gifts. gifts. We forget we the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Together, let us pray. O God, o God of, of power, power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. I will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, 
and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Here ends the reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. The second lesson is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know them, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who lives in all. Here ends the reading. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit at the throne of his glory and he will separate the people one from another just as a shepherd separates the sheep and the goats and he will set the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left he will tell those at his right hand come you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was naked, you gave me clothing. When I was sick, you took care of me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. 
Those on his right will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and give you food and thirsty and give you drink? And when was it we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you and naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and took care of you? And he answered them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the least of one of these of my family, you did it unto me. Then he will say to those on his left, You accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing. I was thirsty, and you gave me no, no drink. When I was a stranger, you did not welcome me. And when I was naked or sick or in prison, you did not take care of me. And they will answer him, Lord, when did we see you? hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or in sick or in prison and did not take care of you and he will answer them just as you did not do it to the least of these you did not do it to me and these will go into eternal punishment and the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. God of glory, we worship you. We adore you. We praise you. We give you thanks for your justice and your mercy. Amen. Today, we come to the end of the liturgical church year, Christ the King Sunday. Next week, we begin Advent. On this final day of the church year, we pause to celebrate the reign of Christ and his victory over death. And so we hear Jesus' final teaching from just before his arrest and execution. In Matthew, the lesson is about the judgment that is to come. As we await the consummation of all things yet to come, we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord in this world where it doesn't look like Jesus Christ is Lord. Why doesn't it look like Christ is Lord? Because the U.S., in the U.S., the strangers, the immigrants, the refugees have had their welcome rescinded over the past few years. This welcome, mandated by Old Testament law and urged by Jesus Christ repeatedly, has been a flashpoint of political argument. But Christians should never have had any questions about it because Jesus Christ is our Lord. And the poor are still poor. The hungry are still hungry. The naked are still naked. The sick are sicker than ever. And the imprisoned are languishing in their cells. So it doesn't look like Jesus Christ is Lord. These are the people the strangers, the hungry, the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned that Jesus Christ named to us as the ones which he himself is present in. Not just 2,000 years ago, but today. How can such a troubled world filled with suffering be the world that Christ is Lord of? It can be the world that Christ is Lord of in the same way that God was and is the God of Israel. God knows 
and Christ knows that we are stubborn, rebellious, unfaithful, unmerciful, and unjust people. God knows and Christ knows. Pockets of faith, of course, and faithfulness exist here and there. Pockets of mercy and justice exist here and there. You and I try hard to be good and faithful disciples. But writ large, this world looks pathetically and rather alarmingly similar to the world that existed when Jesus was arrested and crucified almost 2,000 years ago. There are still dictators and wannabe dictators. There is still persecution and holocaust and war. How can that be? It is because the reign of Christ is already, but not yet. Already begun, but not yet accomplished. In Jesus' final teaching, we are told that when the Son of Man comes in his glory, he will separate people this way. The sheep, who in life had fed, and welcomed, clothed, or visited Jesus, will be gathered in his right hand. And they will be the inheritors of the kingdom that has been prepared for them. The goats, who in life had not fed, welcomed, clothed, or visited Jesus, will be gathered in his left hand and be banished to the eternal flames of judgment. It certainly sounds as if we'd better get our works righteousness checklist out and start checking off the good deeds one after the other. We'd better do all the things that Jesus told us to do or we will be condemned. But let's take a closer look at this parable. It is very interesting that the sheep don't know when it was that they fed, welcomed, clothed, and visited Jesus. And he tells them, well, it was when you fed, welcomed, clothed, or visited anyone in the name of mercy. Likewise, the goats don't know when it was that they failed to feed, welcome, clothe, or visit Jesus. And he tells them, it was when you failed to do it for anyone as an act of mercy. And what we're being told here is that it is not good deeds checked off on a checklist that we will be judged by when the Son of Man comes in his glory. It is mercy, mercy. If you're looking for Jesus to do good deeds on his behalf, you will completely miss the point. Those on the right hand of the king are not those who have conscientiously performed good works or have been morally upright. Rather, they are those who have gone through suffering, those who have lived out their baptism, those who have become disciples, those who have needed mercy and have given mercy indiscriminately. They are the ones who have risked dying and rising with Jesus in this world and are not waiting for some future other world of life. We can be led astray when we try to define those others, those others to which we give mercy. Are they Christians? Part of my community of believers? Do they belong to some group that I belong to or that I have circled, such as white people, Americans, law-abiding people? Anytime we draw a circle around ourselves, God is on the outside of that circle. If we circle ourselves into a white, heterosexual, cisgendered, middle-class, law-abiding group, then God is out there with the people of color, the gay people, the transgender people, the poor, the criminals, and the prostitutes. This should not be news to any Christians. Jesus talked about exactly this almost every day of his ministry. 
Instead, when we understand that we are called to mercy as the underlying framework of our lives, we stop looking for X, Y, Z people to help, and we just live out our lives in mercy to all who appear before us. When people ask us for help, we don't judge them by how they look or how we think that they live their lives. We just help them if we can. And we may not always be able to help, and that's okay. But we don't reject the idea of helping people because we think that they don't deserve it, or that is because they don't look like Jesus. We don't reject them because they don't look the way we think they ought to look. We don't try to fit them into one of the circled groups that we have in our minds. God is the God of this world, and Jesus is the Lord of this world, as messy and unfaithful and unjust and unmerciful as it plainly is. But God is endlessly patient with us while we work this out. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, it will be when we can say the kingdom is already and is accomplished, which means the work that Jesus has established for us has been accomplished. Therefore, it will be when mercy and justice is universal. Then, when all the nations are gathered before him and he separates the people out one from the other as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will find that there are no more goats. When he judges the hearts of the merciful and the unmerciful, he will find that there is nobody left who has circled people into groups and named them worthy and unworthy. And Jesus will also have no need to name us as worthy or unworthy. Until that time, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But when the reign of Christ comes, we will all be declared worthy. Indeed, we already have been. Christ the King has made us worthy, all of us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
This is the time in the service when I ask for your offerings and also give thanks for the many offerings that you do continue to give. You may give online at www.trinitypasadena.org slash online giving, or you may send a check to 997 East Walnut Street, Pasadena, California, 91106. We continue our ministries and uh, our staff also continues, and so we would appreciate every donation. Thank you very much. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you and shared your many blessings. As we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, may we care for all that you have made and share your grace generously through Jesus Christ, our servant and servant. Amen. Join me in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come to among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we, we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You cause rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages especially Ethiopia, Iraq, Afghanistan, and we pray for the continued safety of Taiwan. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away, especially the homeless and poor people who come to Trinity's food ministry. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, and those who have suffered physical and economic losses due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Especially today, we pray for Reggie, Dee Dee, Jolene, Katie, Raymond, Hieronima, Lupita, Brian, Teresa, Lauren, the Nelson family, the Lawson family, and the Benitez Lewis family. And for whom else do the people of God pray? Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Thank you for saints now departed, who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Especially we give thanks for the lives and service of Marianne Nelson and Floyd Lawson. Inspire us by their example, that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. Let us share with each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. The Lord's peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hey. 
now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May, God the, may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessings of God, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.
Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.